If you guys are watching this video, then Melo Ball has been drafted number three overall by the Charlotte Hornets. Man, I'm recording this video in advance. I've been led to believe by a very reliable source that this move is happening, which is why I've got the Charlotte drip light blue. You know what I'm saying? We're going to be rocking a lot of this colorway next season, seeing Melo in Charlotte. But man, Mellow Ball the Charlotte Hornets. I remember in my live stream when I was watching the draft lottery, I said to you guys, I had a dream about Melo playing for Charlotte. Why the Hornets never get the first pick? Bro, I had a dream last night and I had like Lamelo in a Hornets jersey. So, you know what I'm saying? If Lamelo Ball gets drafted by the Hornets, I like manifested it into existence in my sleep, if that's a thing. Told you that the Hornets had a dream. Now listen, I want to clear this up. I did not have a dream about Mellow Ball, right? That's sus. I don't be dreaming about other guys, especially those younger than me. I had a dream that I was in Charlotte, and I was in Charlotte for the purpose of covering Mellow Ball, right? You get what I'm saying? It's, it's not quite as weird. Anyways, above all, what this means most importantly is we are finally going to see LeVar Ball versus Michael Jordan 1v1. Because you know LeVar Ball. LeVar Ball isn't going to be happy about Terry Rozier and all his touches. He's going to turn up to practice. He's going to call MJ out and give him some buckets. Low key, this is a great place for Lamelo to start his NBA career because he's in the Eastern Conference, which means it's not impossible for him to make an all-star game real soon. Like in the Western Conference, you can be a guard averaging 26-27 a game and not make the all-star game. Whereas in the East, you see guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, D'Angelo Russell that one year, get an all-star consideration. If Melo comes into the league and plays with the ability, I believe he can, averaging between 16 and 20 points a game, close to double digits and assists and a bunch of rebounds, it's not going to take him long before he makes an all-star game, especially for a team like the Hornets where he will be the number one option and focal point of that franchise. I think of the other destinations of the top three, this was the best fit for him. Although I would have liked to just have the soundbite of him going number one as it would have been a fantastic end to that story that we covered in the documentary. If you haven't already checked that out, link is down below in the description. 100k in a day, you guys are showing mad love on that. Long term, while that soundbite would have been nice, I didn't really want him in Minnesota. The Timberwolves aren't exactly a team that can acquire any free agents, they're not going to make any big moves in the Western Conference, which is stacked. Mel's not going to make any all-star teams for at least four or five years because there's so many guards. I like him being in the East and I really like this fit. He's well positioned to win Rookie of the Year because he's going to come in and fill that void that hasn't been filled since Kemba. And being with the Hornets, he's also in a low-key situation and a situation where there is no pressure for him to succeed right away. Similar to what Trey Young's doing in Atlanta, he's putting up a bunch of points, playing great basketball, they're acquiring more and more draft picks and they're able to build their team around him because of that. I think Lamelo very quickly in Charlotte will establish himself as the face of that franchise and probably put up the best numbers of any of the other situations. While Detroit I thought was a better situation in terms of the team's trajectory, they could maybe do more. I think if you slotted Lamelo into that Detroit Pistons team, assuming he comes into the league and plays at the level I believe he can, they could make a run at the 8th seed. However, with the Charlotte Hornets, that's not the case. They've got too much work to do. It's going to be a couple of years, but in those couple of years, it'll be fun. They're going to be far away from the mainstream media, which means there won't be much competition on my part covering them. And truthfully, he's going to give Charlotte something to be excited about again. The Hornets are going to be relevant. Their social media numbers, their following, is going to skyrocket. Lamelo is the right pick for business and for a team that realistically isn't competing for a championship they just want to be competitive and play as a business which a lot of NBA franchises are by the way don't deceive yourself thinking every NBA franchise is in this league trying to win a championship nah most owners are content as long as the team's competitive and business is good not saying Michael Jordan doesn't want to build a winning team of course he does but I think he's as aware as anybody that as a small market team if he wants to build a competitive team he must do so through the draft you're not going to acquire any free agents and so far throughout his career in ownership he has done a terrible job at drafting players taking Kwame Brown number one overall Michael Kidd Gilchrist at two it ain't a great track record but I guess this is a step in the right direction taking Lamelo Ball buying into the hype for once and not overthinking it I don't know, but if you guys have made it up to the end and enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, follow my Instagram and Twitter links are down below in the description. The one of one documentary is also out now. I can't emphasize enough. Go check that out. The numbers are doing crazy. 100k in a day. We're killing it. Anyways, like the video on the way out. And on that note, it's DKM signing out. Till next time and peace.